All right, we are back. Another episode of Digital Recruiter Podcast. Got my friend, Digital Recruiter Client. So hired to work in there oof, about a year ago. Founder of JL Recruitment, along with co-founder Brian. Two awesome guys. I got one of them here today. I got Nick. We're going to talk about his journey building a firm, working with Digital Recruiter. Uh, and I think it's just a very real and honest approach to building an agency, not all the fluff that is on LinkedIn. Maybe sometimes encouraged by me. Uh, but Nick, how you doing, my friend? Doing good. I'm excited. You know, it's been a been a long year, and you know, yeah. have a pretty good story now that we've been uh, since we first introduced ourselves. Yeah, it, it's action packed, right? I mean, did you think when you first joined the program that like there was this much to tackle in recruiting? No, absolutely yeah. not. You, I mean, you you see the end goal. It's like find a job, find a person who's looking for a job fill the job and yeah. turns out turns out there's like a million other things in between <laughs> yeah it's like yeah, yeah nick fine job nick fine candidate yeah it's like <laughs> a little bit more than the caveman style which i think a lot of our prospects right sometimes think that's what that's what we I are <laughs> or anyone can do it right uh, uh, but then you get kind of the learned reality because you started when did you start recruiting uh so i started five years ago um so pre- i guess previously i was in accounting so i did uh, the three years of public accounting had an opportunity to kind of get into the IT sales and recruiting side there. Uh, then after a couple of years of that, kind of got that itch to get back into the the accounting finance side, and that's when uh, myself and business partner, my longtime friend Brian, we ended up starting our own own uh, firm here, JL Recruitment Group, and you know I've really kind of focused in on that accounting accounting finance world and all the different jobs and opportunities that exist there. Gotcha. Well, so how did you get from and I know we covered this like probably again a year ago when we first met, but for the listeners, from the account, you were with PwC, right? Yep. Uh, and then how'd you get to that into recruitment? Like, what was the story there? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's a pretty normal career path, obviously, public accounting to recruiting. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, after I think I had three or four busy seasons there, I um, just got burnt out about April, May one year and had a family friend reach out with an opportunity where they said, hey, I think your skill sets have the right match for what we're looking for in our company. Is this something you might be interested in? Caught me at the right time. It was, you know, like I said, in that IT uh, recruiting world, you know, I felt, I fell right into it. I really liked the industry. I liked, you know, being able to be client facing, meeting with a bunch of different people, not really being stuck in spreadsheets and yeah. looking at different, you know, accounting policies. I think it really fit my, uh, my skill set a lot better. And I, I really, really liked that industry. So I got hooked right away. Um, after spending some time there, yeah, like I said, I kind of got that itch to go out on my own, kind of, you know, revert back into that accounting world. Uh, I had kind of built a lot of connections in, um, still had a lot of old friends and colleagues that were uh, at PwC and elsewhere. So, uh, yeah, we ended up starting starting up our uh, own firm and have been kind of just hammering it out since. That, no, that was it's interesting to go, you know, get, go to PwC, go to IT recruiting, and then you kind of like, what was that switch like, right? It's, I know you went back to the niche that you kind of quote unquote yeah. grew up in or started your career, but like, what what did that switch do for you? I mean, what was it like, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right away, just immediate failing all the time. Lots of rejection. You don't, you don't get that in accounting, you know, it's yeah. very, very numbers oriented. Everything balances out very, it was like kind of a yin and yang to it. When you, when I stepped into this, it was all sales just completely different so i'm just you know doing cold calls sending out emails people that i've never been in uh industry i've never worked in and it was just yeah a lot of a lot of rejection to begin with uh but from that rejection you know you learn you know why did they say no was it we were too forward we weren't providing them with a solution we weren't doing x y and z and you know you start to learn from those uh, as long as you can get past that that rejection stage, some people will kind of fail and <laughs> fail with that. And then, you know, they take it too personally. I think being able to uh, kind of push through that and learn from it made, made the biggest difference, but it was, it was tough at the beginning. I'm not, I won't sugarcoat it. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a tough industry to break into and certainly very tough to, to learn when you come from a completely different background to begin with. 
Well, I was going to say your degree of difficulty on what you were jumping from and jumping into is insane. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, just because uh, they had you starting with sales. Were you doing recruiting as well or full desk or? No, so it was just sales. So we had yeah, a recruiting team, which that was that was helpful for me because that would have been another <laughs> difficult thing to learn right off. Um, but, I, you know, we had our daily check ins. I really like to understand their recruiting methods, how they were reaching out, if there was any input I could provide. Um, and then also just learning from them how they did their outreach, because that kind of helps me speak to our potential clients. You know, hey, we reach out to X amount of people today. This is our process. Um, people want to know process. They want to understand what you're doing. What's the value of using you versus either their internal team or another team? So, uh, you know, even if you're not on the recruiting side, if you're mainly on the sales side, understanding what your recruiters are doing. So that way, you know, when the time comes to explain to your end client what what you know, the true magic is that you're providing, that's you're able, able to speak to it a lot easier. Well, I mean, it makes, uh, it makes so much more sense now because you guys were amazing clients from, from day one. Uh, Too great to work with, but like that's, it, it, it totally makes sense in terms of kind of going into that industry, sticking it out, making it through. But really, how was it dealing with the recruiters, right? Because then you get rejected, but then say you start bringing stuff in, right? So when did it start to click when you started to get, you know, fish on the hook and like started to bring orders in? Like how long did that take you? So that was probably like three to four months. Um, so, you know, it's making introductions, understanding if the timing's right, uh, you know, getting an idea of what they're looking for. If they, you know, if, if they use recruiting agencies, if they don't, you know, if, and if they don't, you know, explaining the benefits of using it. And then, you know, maybe I made a good relationship the first two months, but they don't have a need until, you know, two, three months later, but then, then it clicks. And some of those relationships you form, those constant follow-ups you've had, then you start getting this, this waterfall of, of job orders from that. You get the new outreach of people that, you know, as you've kind of corrected your form and corrected your uh, outreach to them to fix and fine tune what they want to hear, uh, you start to you know see those come in. And I think that's when there starts to become this trust amongst the recruiters that, hey, I'm going to I'm going to help you out. You got to help me out. But, you know, trust that we could get these job orders in and I will trust that you are able to provide you know, what we will consider top talent for these roles or the right fit. Absolutely. So three to four months. And I mean, what do they have you on for like KPIs? Like we're just doing all cold calls, like emails, like what was it? Was, it was a lot of or... yeah, a lot of cold calling. We did not have a lot of, um, you know, systems in place for receiving information. It was a lot of hunting job boards, finding their information, reaching out to them. I didn't have, um, you know, data scrapes to get all their calls. Like I would have preferred just to have a hundred phone numbers. I had to call each day. And um, this is, you know, company wasn't set up for us to have all of that information. So it was a lot of kind of data mining on my own, finding the information, you know, that would be a part of my day is just find 30, 40 people that I want to contact, then find their contact information and then figure out, you know, what is going to be the best outreach. Am I going to, try LinkedIn? Am I going to try email? Am I going to, if I can get their phone number, am I going to call them? And how am I getting past these gatekeepers and all these different steps you have to do? Uh, it just kind of was an extra element that I'm sure at some point during this conversation today, we'll, we'll talk about how you've helped expedite that, that process that <laughs> well, yeah. I had to previously go through and uh, it feels like another <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> well, and that's like, you know, there's always kind of like the before and after sometimes with digital recruiter and and the members that come in. And that's why I love working with people with your background, that you've done it the hard way. You've gone through the reps. It's actually really the only people I let into the program now, Uh, whether you come from, you know, the big firm and starting on your own or or you've, you know, maybe even a small firm. And as long as you've been through the ups and downs and really had to grind through, you can really appreciate what automation and good marketing can do. To, to the sales and fulfillment process and what we're really trying to accomplish. I've In the first couple of years, I, it wasn't too many people, but I let in some people, you know, with by accident, just, I think just being new to this. Um, and I thought it was on autopilot. Right? I'm going to get automation and content going. And it's just like, wait, where are my leads? It's like, well, you, you, this is recruiting. This is business development. Like you got you to gotta work a little bit here. Like, <laughs> you know, our life is already cushy enough. We're working remote. We're relying on digital tools on that. Like well, you can do something, right? You can give a little bit of an effort. Uh, and I think this, and people will give it a couple shots and then sometimes just give up. 
like but you had that persistence like where did that persistence to just stay with it like where does that come from right or like what yeah. what was your drive to just stick with it because it's really hard those first three to four months it is and you know to one point it can be an intangible i mean there's people who words probably affect them more than others you know when you get that rejection are you able to just bounce it off or you know you can be thin skinned yeah. and be like ah oh, man that's that, that's a bummer you know let it go um so that that's a huge i mean it's it's definitely a mentality you need to be able to keep going through even through adversity um and there's a lot of adversity oh, that you have to go through yeah. so i think that's that's a huge part of it but i mean yeah just learning from what you're doing i mean it's it's a repetition process if you keep doing it if you're fine tuning if you're changing you know small aspects of your outreach changing small uh, things within your conversations, it's going to make a huge difference in your day to day. I know, like, just thinking about my outreach I would have had then, the conversations I would have started. I mean, it's just night and day different from yeah. from you know what we would be doing today. So that's you know not not getting too hung up on any of those previous failures, but making sure that you're using that as a learning opportunity and continuing to evolve your outreach, evolve your communication skills, and you know just be ready to to grind when you need to. Yeah, I would say allow yourself to get better is right is a big one of just like mm-hmm. I look at some of my outreach from three years ago, four years ago, and I'm just like cringing at it. I'm like, oh, that is terrible. Uh, and I'm like, what was I doing? But like, I didn't know any better. Right. And again, if I didn't send that message out, I wouldn't have gone to the stuff that I can do today. Be better or realize, you know what? Like, I don't want to cold pitch all the time. And if I do, I'd rather just give value. So I'm going to create a crap ton of free value out there and just share it with people, right? Especially coaching and a little bit different than recruiting. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so there's a different approach with it, you know, having done both. But again, it, it, yeah, putting yourself out there lets you become better and evaluate. I mean, I think that's one of the first tenets of the program is just do something, right? But better published than perfect, in terms of Dripify, in terms of content, we can always tweak it and make it better and improve on it and evaluate it, right? Which we do all the time, and we did, you know, we did for you. But it's like just try and remove the emotion. And, and look, if you get a response that kind of drives the emotion, look good. Let that fuel you to reach out to ten more people or to post about it or to do something. But I think really turning those those little feedback things, right, or whatever that you get, or like turning that rejection into a like a behavior that drives you to more action i think is is really important it kind of sounds like what you what you did right and kind of like had to do it's all right like how do i take these things and just like keep going right and just be okay with like i would say like failing but kind of getting rejected in a sense um it's just like hey this is part of the game this is how i earn my stripes and i think that sometimes is forgotten right like anyone that does anything noteworthy and respectable, like they've earned their way. That's why we respect them. Right. Mm-hmm. When there's kind of like unearned, it's kind of like, yeah, but like, you didn't really like work for it. It's like, that's like the worst place to be. Uh, you know, and you definitely don't have that. So, uh, cause you, you definitely put in, put in the, uh, put in the calls. Yeah. No, and I, that's a huge part of it. I mean, it's continuing to learn, continuing to adapt and not being, you know, too, if you get stuck in one place for too long, if you get hung up on too, something, yeah, you'll never succeed. And if yep. you keep using these opportunities as a learning opportunity, and then when something good does happen, I mean, it usually compounds those that dopamine rush, that get the yeah. positive response. I mean, you'll just you just deal. Those days happen, and it's just boom, boom, boom. Every That's everybody's so answering good. their calls. You get all these emails, but you know, yeah, you just got to get past the slow days. You know, the, the Thursday, Fridays when yeah. people aren't answering, it's like ah, it's fine. You know, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, it's, next week's going to be okay, but. Yeah, you just you just keep doing, put in that process, the repetition, and you you start to see the windfalls of it. Yeah, I, I'm with you, man. I mean, I, I've said it before, not on this, but just in conversations I've had with people. Like, I get more excited when I make tweaks to say like a sales approach or like a coaching call that works out than I do when the money hits the account. I I like money hitting the account. I like paying my bills. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but just like. It's almost like when it hits and it clicks, or you get the response that you were looking for, or you plan for, and you you see that execution execution come through. I think for me, it's because the more I can control that more, right? Yeah. Unlike that approach and that, that reaction, but also like I feel like once I it clicks, I can do it over and over and over again. And to That's me, then the byproduct of the revenue will be there. But it's like 
oh, I got something I can do forever now. Like, I know this works. I got some data around it, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah no, I, re I really like that. Once you find the right, the right approach, the right one that's getting the correct feedback, that's when you're going to start seeing potentially an unlimited amount of revenue. Like, you get that one person to say yes, that's fine. But now I know this approach works. Let's keep putting this on repeat. Let's get 12 people to say yes. And now it's not just the one check. It's 12 different checks that are coming in. And each one, you know, has all all stemmed from being able to be like, oh, it was because I was asking them why instead of what. Like, you know, just changing one word that gets them a little more excited about answering you. And I, I think that starts to be the main driver once you see these small successes happen. Yeah. Yeah, I know we'll get we'll talk about the program later, but that was one of the I think I remember like one of the first calls I had with you and Brian was going over what you currently had on the board and just reframing how you guys were asking some of those questions or following up with clients or on those roles. It's just like ways to dig in a little bit more and get the client to kind of reach out more. And I remember you told me when you I think you finally used like the rec qualifying sheet. I'm gonna say finally, I'm sure it was within weeks, but like like, dude, that was the best thing to take all of that. Like ever right and that's just like that was game changer. crazy right it's crazy and then you're like well i could do this forever like this makes my life way easier uh and it, yeah it you, you so didn't simple. have to do it yeah mm -hmm. yeah and it, i mean that was something you yeah you guys provided it was very simple it's the questions in one form or another i've asked in every intake call but never consecutively never just being confident about hey after i get this answer i'm gonna have this response because you know, this role has been open for two months. Okay, now I know it's urgent. I understand that there's a reason that they need this to be filled. All right, so are there other agencies working on it? Like all these questions that you know to ask, but once you do them, one in repetition and kind of in succession where they kind of build on each other, you, you start to get so much more out of a call, whereas before it was, you got an open role? All right, let me see if we can yeah. help you. What do they need to learn? You know, it's yeah, are our like fees in line? All right, cool. Let's, There's let's no pivot forward. tables and like that about it. But like <laughs> whether you're coming at it with like as like a professional, you're like not professional because you are professional, but like as like a consultant, right? When people are like, how do I get the great clients, the great fees? Like you hit them like a consultant in a sense. Like mm -hmm. you're like a recruiting partner and all that. Like what does that look like? And just being intentional about it. Um, it, it's one of the biggest differences. And we want to get into that, but I, I want to ask just with the agency before we get into how you built your own. Yeah. What was, you start bringing in roles. What was it like dealing with the recruiters, right? The initial time when you start bringing in your roles and getting people to work on your stuff, dealing with recruiters, like how do you get recruiters to get you good candidates and feedback? And how did that like, you know, what did you learn about them in that process? What, what did you kind of learn about yourself? Of like, oh crap, like I got to kind of get better at this, this and that. So I can give mm -hmm. my recruiters more of a chance to win. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a lot. I and mean, this was 2019, 2020, right when kind of people switched to work in remote. So there's all, always that like trust factor is like, Hey, if I'm getting this role, are we getting, you know, cause I don't think they, we even had KPIs for them as well. And that's, you know, looking back on it, wasn't the greatest idea ever, but <laughs> you know, it's having that trust and relationship where it's, you know, how many people are we getting sent? Are they quality resumes? If they're not quality resumes, why did you screen them and think they were? And kind of continuing to fine tune their search process. And I had to get a better understanding of, hey, you know, you guys thought this person was good, why? And, you know, once you start asking those questions and understanding, oh, you know, this person isn't, you know, a great fit because he didn't have, you know, he had front end experience instead of back end, you know, the, just small things that, oh, well, he had Java, he should be perfect. It's like, well, no, there's, there's multiple steps into that past that you need to understand. And, I think starting to bridge those gaps with your recruiting team and making sure they fully understand the role. And if they don't, you know, let them ask the questions, make sure they're in a comfortable space where they feel like they can ask these questions. Like they shouldn't have to be guessing or filling the blanks. They're not ITs. They're not accountants. They're recruiters. They have, I think, a, a 10,000 level view of a lot of different industries. But if they do need to get lower into the details, making sure you can either answer the questions or get them in front of a hiring manager and get them to answer questions because the biggest mistake you could have is that big disconnect between what they're looking for and what you're searching for. And you're going to come up with just two completely different candidates that, you know, they're ideal versus what you think is ideal. Yeah. It's uh, the screening form. Like we'll, we'll do one for each role. <clears throat> and that's been the biggest game changer because we do, we have team members that 
looks like my wife recruited. She was a third grade teacher a year ago, right? You know, whether you get, she's been on yeah. nursing stuff, psychiatrist, on project managers, on sales roles, like, like give me the screening form. I can vet out anyone. And, you know, she gets the feedback, like just the appreciation from the candidates of why hey, that was a great call. I appreciate it. It's like half the time she, she comes up with the question. Some of the time, the other half it's from the account manager, from the client. Like, what do you want us to ask? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just having the humility to ask that, right? And then going back to your recruiting team and just saying the why and like, I was like okay, so there's some gaps here, kind of what you're seeing, like that to help kind of bridge that gap. And that's what I tell recruiters all the time, like you're selling a <clears throat> process and a process and being persistent and ask, but like, again, you're saving them time. It's not about being perfect in the presentation. It's about really being an extension of that. So talk to your clients. And if you're a recruiter, talk to your account manager that way hey you tell me what to ask i'll ask it right mm -hmm. and i'll screen it and i'll figure out make sure the way they're telling the truth and i'll document the information and yada yada but i think that's like you remove almost the ownership from the recruiter in terms of oh you have to know everything versus like no we'll set you up for success and now as you get and i would do this even if you're you know if i'm sure you would do this if you're looking at a cfo role which you know how to qualify a cfo mm -hmm. right and how to talk to them but asking the client, like, hey, what questions do you want me to ask, right, that I haven't thought of? I know there's our standard ones, but let's brainstorm, right? Like, what would be really nice for you to see, like, what they've done or the answer? And I think just that part of the process, I've seen open up the communication so much internally with account managers and recruiters, but just by just not being afraid to, to ask that, right, to, to clients. seem like, hey, let us in on this process where I've got to figure it out together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I... I... I don't think there's one client we have where we do a submission the same way between them. There's some clients that, you know, they want to know, you know, what they do outside of work, what things are easy to talk about during conversations that'll make the interview better. There's some people who have, you know, the 10 canned questions that they want us to provide those. And then other ones are just, Hey, provide us a resume and a summary and whatever, you know, we want to curate it to whatever they're most comfortable with and what is going to drive, you know, their interview. Uh, one that I've really liked is, uh, finding out things that'll help, especially for accountants. They're usually a little more introverted and kind of harder to break that shell. And interviews are tough to begin with because you're already going to be a somewhat Client different that version bullshit. of your... Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we, we, we try to provide like these little notes of like, hey, he really likes playing Frisbee golf or, hey, he goes to the lake a lot in the summer. And if they can organically bring that up early on in the conversation, just breaks that wall a little bit more so the interview can be more rewarding for both sides where you see you know, a true candidate for what they are and not the 12 canned answers that they have prepared ahead yeah. of time that, you know, yeah. what was a difficult problem you've had and how yeah. did you solve it? Like, everyone has the answer for that. That's good. That means you prep for the interview, but you know, I, I want to know, am I going to enjoy working with you late one night? If it's eight o'clock, am I going to be miserable next to you? Or can I get that, you know, understanding about your personality a little bit more during the interview? And if you're able to get all of those things out of an interview because of things that we suggested, then I think we're providing more of a service than, you know, maybe their typical interview yeah. strategies would have worked. Uh, it's interesting. And that's, I mean, it goes to show like you really learning and understanding your industry. I think learning from the feedback from the clients and candidates. Um, and because you, yeah, you have to have that buy-in, especially with a, a, a <clears throat> department that can kind of be, as you said, maybe not the most exhilarating on, on paper uh, or on the surface, right? Kind of how to yeah. create some depth or reveal some depth, you know, and that's everyone has it. Mm -hmm. um, how has that changed some of the interview process? Have you noticed that with feedback with candidates and all that, that they enjoy the process more or, or kind of what's been the feedback on that? Yeah, I'll, I'll get it from both sides. I mean, the, the candidates, they feel like it's a different interview process than they've had before. It's not the six behavioral questions that they normally get or just doing a technical quiz. Yeah. You know, they're like, oh, I felt like it was more of a conversation. I was really able to show more of my personality, which sometimes, you know, given my personality skill sets, I'm not able to get across, which is unfortunate because I think I'm qualified for the job. I just get nervous during interviews and I, I don't feel super comfortable. I think this helps kind of break down that barrier where they do feel like, oh, hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm good at this. I can do this. I, they don't have to have that imposter syndrome because they start to feel more comfortable. And then from the client side as well, they're, while I saw a completely different version of candidates than I typically see, they, they seem relaxed while still being professional, but, you know, I was kind of leading the conversation, you know, when we got a little bit off subject is because of the notes you gave for us to, you know, let's talk about the Frisbee golf. Let's talk about stuff outside of work because 
that's kind of drives most of your personality. Nobody grew up wanting to be an accountant. You know, they wanted, they wanted <laughs> to go out and play golf. They wanted to go do these other things that really built their personality. They happen to be an accountant. So let's, let's figure out what those other things are and see if that's going to mesh a little bit better. I, I love that. I mean, very creative and kind of one of those like little quote unquote, little big things mm-hmm. and, you know, to get, just change the candidate client experience enough. And just, I think they, it shows both of the sides being heard to your point. Yep. And when you have that, especially the easy, <clears throat> people don't forget it, right? They yep. want to come back to you both from a client and candidate side. I know in your industry, candidates are, are in short supply right, yep. and high demand. So I got to imagine, you know, kind of the ecosystem you guys are building and you're only what a year and a half into this total, mm-hmm. which is crazy being on your own. So we can kind of go into that. You, you start February, 2023. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good All right. Um, so it's you and Brian. How'd you guys meet? How'd you guys know each other? Uh, so if we go back, you know, 30 plus years ago, it was around kindergarten. We ran into each other and it's been a whirlwind of a relationship since kind of went all the way through up till college, um, stayed in connection throughout college. And then afterwards, both ended up back in Kansas city. He was recruiting. I was in accounting and then, uh, I, he kind of tapped my shoulder a few times about the potential of doing this, but at the time he was never right. Uh, when I first started it in the, IT sales side, he's like, oh, you're in this now. Let's, you know, we can do this. We can do this. And he kind of kept pushing my feathers that eventually it just, the timing is right. And I was ready for a new opportunity. And um, yeah, so it kind of happened organically, but I was, I was excited that he kind of kept pushing me to, to to want to do it because, you know, after a while you can't say no to somebody. (laughs) Yeah. Well, Hey, look, persistence, right? So it's surprising that he's the recruiter versus the sales, (laughs) right? With your partnership. Um, Uh, Interest as you started, I don't think I ever got the kindergarten wrinkle. It's all these things that come out here. I know. Uh, well, it's now. a full hour we get. Yeah, look at that. Everyone's going to be like, how do you not know your, your clients better? <laughs> but that's all right. Uh, <laughs> we had work to do. You know, We had yeah, to get down to it. There was important things. There was important things to do. Yes, systems and operations now. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, start February. We started work about a year ago. So <clears> those first few months, how'd that go? And I guess kind of, yeah, what led you to to us work together. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, day one, very exciting. You know, it's new company. This is awesome. This is great. I got all these people I want to reach out to day two. It's like, all right, what are we doing? (laughs) Yeah. So it it really hit a reality there. It's like, you know, I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants. Um, You know, do I go to a job board? Do I kind of contact some old colleagues and see, you know, what they're up to? And it, it was a combination of that, you know, Obviously, with a new company, you want it as many warm leads as possible because you don't really have that reputation to lean back on when you're uh, doing a cold call. You know, like, hey, we just started last week. You want us to help you with anything? <laughs> Trust so, us. Yeah. Tr- <laughs> we are good. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, I think that That's was a great headline. That's, that should be our LinkedIn <laughs> banner, by the way. Yeah. We are good. <laughs> we are good. Thumbs up. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that was that was uh, the beginning. Yeah. It was just kind of not, not having that process. It was... I would wake up each morning and, you know, open up my laptop and be like, all right, let's look at the job board. Let's see if I got any responses, kind of hoping stuff would come to me and hoping stuff would just happen organically that wasn't happening because I wasn't doing the right steps or, you know, I was contacting, I didn't, wasn't reaching the right decision makers or I wasn't having the right messages curated to make them, you know, want to respond to us. So I think that was the most difficult part. We had enough, I think, warm connections, warm leads, to be able to get us started and have you know some initial successes, but nothing that was super repeatable and nothing that happened because of you know what we did professionally. A lot of those, you know, if it's a personal or you know previous relationship connection that you're able to leverage, fine. But if it's you know trying to do that repetitively, it's not going to work with a new client. So you know that that can only get you so far. And I think that was our our biggest pitfall was trying to figure out what we needed to do to to make that next step. Which is interesting because you came from an agency where you went through this for three to four months, but it, mm-hmm. it's a little bit different when you get paid to struggle versus you're struggling and not getting paid, right? Like, what, yeah. talk about the changes in dynamics there. Like, how did that create? It seemed like it created even more urgency. It did. You, right? I mean, yeah, you had you, the safety net. Yeah, yeah. And you know, recently engaged, got a, a new yeah. a new family starting. You want to make sure you're staying successful and having those different things. You know, when you have a salary before, it's you know all right, we had a cold month, but that's fine. We're, we're still going through, you know, we put all the chips in on this, you know, you, you kind of feel those extra stresses early on. 
but you know you you kind of power through it and you you know you look to see what changes can we implement how can we you know find different clients different roles and then even on brian's side you know what can we do to find new candidates why aren't they responding um, accountants by and large are not interested until they're interested so yeah. unless they're ready to to get out of the market they're they're pretty shut in i mean i know when i worked at pwc i've looked at linkedin maybe one time in three years it's not the most riveting thing we don't have a lot of free time to begin with so maybe that's not the perfect way to communicate with them but if there's another way we can get outreach to them and just kind of figuring out those different methods. Cause then once you start to develop a, you know, a plan and process that works a little bit better, that's when you can really start to see the difference between, you know, day one when we had no idea what we we're doing and day a hundred, it's like, okay, yeah, I, I feel like there's a process now. Yeah. And I think that's, that was, I remember Brian, when he reached out, he was like, you know, I started, I was talking about rec quality a lot starting probably last summer. And he's just like, dude, you're striking a chord. I was like, what do you want? Like, you know, if we hop on a call, what do you want to chat about? I was like, dude, better recs. Like we need better roles to work on and figuring that out. And, <clears throat> and so it was good. I think you guys were asking the right questions, right? It wasn't like, mm -hmm. oh, we need more tech or we need marketing or whatever. I think, and it was the humility right away. I still remember the message because I, I don't see it all the time from recruiters, just the humility because with the recruiters, right? Qualifying a role is a point of pride, right? Mm -hmm. No one wants to really admit that they kind of might've dropped the ball on how they're qualifying business and that impacting the rest of the, the agency or right, what you're working yeah. on. And so that immediately stuck out to me from my perspective, but I'm curious for you because he's the one that reached out. Then, then you and I talked after like, what were those conversations like as co-founders uh, yeah. amongst yourselves and kind of what was that process for looking for coaching or training or help? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, Brian, Brian reached out to me and said, Hey, I just talked to this guy named Clark. And I was like, <laughs> all right, tell me more. <laughs> and he kind of, you know, he explained what, you know, what you were pitching, what, you know, the opportunity was there. And you, I mean, you were right. Just the, it did strike a chord because we, it was the process. It was the idea that, you know, we know what we want to do. We know the end goal and we're open to revamping our entire process, but we don't even know what that begins with. Is it more job boards? Is it more outreach? Is it a combination? Uh, is it new technologies we've never heard of? Turns out yeah. it was kind of all of them. All the above, right? Circle <laughs> yeah. D or G in and this I'm, case. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad Brian reached out because I know he, I mean, we, we both kind of felt stressed as in because it was, you know, just like a rut where we're just, and to your point, the rec qualifications and being able to, that wasn't something we'd ever considered. It's like, we got a job order. Awesome. That's something to work on, but there's so many more elements to that. It's like this, they're hesitant to hire this role has been open for eight months. There's all these different things, you know, there's 50 recruiters working on it, stuff that we didn't even consider because it was more of a, we're happy to have this job order. Perfect. Let's go work on it. And, you know, starting to say, Hey, it's okay to say no, there's, there's clients that, you know, this isn't meant for us to work with them. There's other, you know, big agencies that might have the, the surplus time or effort to do it, but that's not, you know, we want to make sure. That's someone else's money yeah. that they're wasting, right? Not yours. It's not going to be mine. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. time's money. I, I can't be wasting that anymore. So yeah, being able to really filter that down and, and having the right idea of, hey, if I can, you know, say no to this client, I'm going to have 2x time to find candidates for this role that I'm 90% sure we're capable of filling. Or the other one, you know, 10%. Is that is that worth your time when you know we can really leverage our, our abilities and and you know resources to get in that field? And I saw it right away. Like as soon as we went through some of the scenarios and we were you guys were going through the beginning parts of the course, it was just it was such a it's not a it's a it's a easy fix in a sense of once you see the other side, you're like, oh duh. Right. <laughs> but with that said. You stayed with it. I, I can't tell you how many people I've told, I've preached this to that still, it's just, it's like, it's the rush of, mm -hmm. of a role and they can't get away from saying no, from qualifying it from, you know, it's, it's just, I got to sign the agreement. I got to, yeah. I got to work on it. I'm like, stop. Like, it's the biggest waste of time. Like, you can always get more business now. Look, it is a tough market. I'm not going to say that it's not, but Man, if you're especially if you're a small shop, how much you don't need all the business in the world. You just need good business to yeah, to be right good business. to go exactly. And I think I mean, coming in, it's like the systems and and the plan is one thing. Most of the time with the systems, I I'm, I try to simplify things 
for people. Like, oh, mm-hmm. you actually don't have to worry about these 10 things. Just focus on these three and like, and then let's talk, right? Let's see where you're at. Um, mm-hmm. That's kind of what I felt like you, we did, right? It's just like, okay, let's talk about better roles. Let's get automation set up. And let's talk content. Like, let's do those three things and like, let's see where we're at in a couple months. Um, yep. I mean, that's how I remember it. I, I'm, I'm, hopefully I'm not, I think that's probably about right, right? No, that was, that was it. I mean, it was, it was kind of learning. Well, I mean, and really listening to what you guys had to present. I mean, content was completely new to us. I had, you know, our, our content was, Hey, we have a new job. Contact <laughs> us if you're interested. Classic. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And Riveting. Yeah. We had, we yeah. had one or two likes from old <laughs> friends or colleagues that were like, why are you posting this? Yeah. But just nothing, again, yeah, nothing that was meaningful, nothing that, you know, talked about what we provide as a company. Yeah. And then, you know, that kind of, that compounded with our outreach just didn't map up yeah. to us being able to, you know, provide additional uh, you know, resources for, yeah. for us. So we talk, so Brian tells you about me, then we all talk, then you sign up. Like, what were your expectations going in? I'm curious. I mean, it was... In my mind, it was what's learn a new process. And it was like, that was the word. And I'll, I'll keep harping on it. It was process, process, process. Like that was what we didn't have. It's what I wanted. And I, I was all in on AI, even if I didn't really know what it meant. I was all in <laughs> on this automate. I was like, we're, we can be doing stuff more automated. We can have stuff that we're not doing any of that. So let's leverage that. We can be, you know, we're technologically savvy. We can be doing this. We're, we're not, but we can. So just really listening in, seeing if this could process. But that's like what I, that's what I was hoping to get out of it was how what can I do to change to be more effective, and what can I do to change to make all my processes more efficient. I think that there was a great combination of both as we were, you know, even step one as we did content, and then we'd learn automation and like as we learned each one, it's like oh yes, and then I pair that with this, and now I can have this happening at the same time. As, and it, it's made a huge difference in in our process as we kind of conducted our work each day. Yeah, it was cool when I, you guys kind of put the quote unquote engine in, right? With the, the strategy, fixing the profile, building <clears> the <throat> right list, like oh. leveraging the, the LinkedIn tools, getting the Dripify going. I, rem- I think I, I kind of remember like, you guys like, wait, we're like connecting with people left and right, like on <laughs> autopilot and it's great. And you had the PwC background. So the candidates were like, re- people were really gravitating towards your profile. Mm-hmm. Um, as well, although, although Brian's like kills it though <laughs> with candidates too. So I, I it's like kind of both of you. Like the, I, yeah. I've always said like, the, you guys were able to get some account counting candidates. Like you always have someone in your network. Uh, it, it's crazy. Like what did that do when you get that running? I mean, I talk about like time saved and just being in the market. Like what did that do to kind of open, open your eyes? Yeah. I mean, it felt like I had 35 hours in a day after that. It was just (laughs) so many, so many things where I was just like, I don't have to go through and search senior audit manager. I can put in a thing that's for the next two weeks, it's going to be sending out connections, introducing what we offer, talking to them and doing that all in the background is I can focus on things, you know, clients that need our help, potential clients that we can help, all these things that you'd never have time for. Now, this outreach is happening in the background. You're able to do the things that, you know, you can focus on more. And then at the end of it, you're going to still be getting warm leads from the stuff that's happening in the background that, again, just takes away more more time that you didn't have before that you could focus on those and they're highly qualified. Um, yeah, it was just mind-blowing how much <laughs> stuff could get done without me having I'm like, oh, this is how I can... Yeah. You know, 10x all this different outreach that before I was like, connect, connect, connect. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, it's so grueling. Man. <laughs> and it's just like, I didn't even have that at the air tech days. Like, I didn't even have the LinkedIn. It was just like call mm-hmm. and walking in and call. It's just like, it's so time consuming. Yeah. Um, and it's not that those things shouldn't be happening, <clears throat> but as, as you said, how do you complement it so you can do all the things at the same mm-hmm. time without sacrificing quality? So, and, and what was it like to have the support to, to help expedite your learning curve versus you? Because some people are like, I'm going to figure <clears throat> out Dripify on my own, right? Hey, no problem, yeah. right? Or LinkedIn automation. I got no problem with that. But what did it do for you to just kind of have that support and figuring some of this stuff out? Yeah, it was, it was a nice safety net. I mean, there was, it's a new application. I, again, consider myself tech savvy. I was able to get in there, but there's, there's efficiencies. I, I was like, I know this can be better. I reach out to Christina, I reach out to you. All of a sudden I'm like, oh, you know, if you add this, you can message people you're already connected to. And it's like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. That makes perfect sense. I just didn't know you could do that. 
And there's just like so many different one-off situations that having you guys as that additional, you know, resource to reach out to, you know, makes you feel a lot more comfortable in using it and knowing that you're not just completely butchering your name and you know, ruining <laughs> your, brand your, your reputation. Name. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, Oh, I accidentally send out like it's everyone saying hi, first name. It's like, Oh, I kind of messed that up. Oh, I've done that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Again, having, having that part, way. like, yeah. yeah. So it, feeling confident that I'm like, Oh, this is the right way. I know it, you know, what it looks like in a template isn't right, but that's, you know, that code is going to come through and it's going to uh, pull those. So I think there was just an extra sense of confidence that everything we're doing is correct because we're, you know, going through this process and, uh, you know, to your, your guys is like spreadsheets and folders and information. Those were super helpful just to like, if I needed something, even if you guys it's late at night, I could just go in there and most of the answers I needed were, were part of your, you know, full package that was, you know, available to us at any time. So well, I think that's a huge difference. Which is great. And even <clears throat> I think Ben definitely upgraded since even then, cause that's like, that was before Kajabi and like all this stuff's like way, yeah. way more updated now, which is nice. But um we talked about the Rex, the roles i remember you guys had your you know the business <clears> planning <throat> tool we call it and we're mapping out current accounts old accounts you know although not meant not much was like that old but you know stuff that you kind of had in the mix how to have those conversations how to you know re-engage with prospects how to qualify the roles we covered that you guys get the dripify going kind of just the outreach right you know what's manual i know the mpc approach was big and something that you yep. you worked with it with with success. But uh, before we get to that, let's talk about like you get Dripfly going, we qualify better business so there's less wasted time. There's less time on manual outreach or you're, you're getting the outreach because you saved hours there. So now it's like, all right, okay, this guy's telling us to write content and relevant content. You guys were kind of starting from scratch in a sense, right? Building the content muscle, but you guys post mm -hmm. all the time. You guys really took to it. I know a lot of recruiters listening to this are like, how can I do this and still recruit and still sell? Like, but what was it like, how were you able to attach a content process knowing the other stuff we were kind of already <clears> fixing? <throat> like, yeah. how did that let you just engage in it, learn it and just kind of do it without like, you know, you spending all your time. Mm -hmm. And you have to, you have to go all in on, on content. There's a lot of humility that's there. You know, if you're not, if you never make Facebook posts, if you never make any sort of thing, like on social media, it's, it kind of feels like that. And you know, it's, there's kind of this vulnerability of, all right, I'm going to have to start posting and people are going to see it. But, you know, it's at the end of the day, the people you're directing the message to, you're trying to help them. You're trying to, you know, provide a value add. So you get past that. You do the first couple of weeks. All right, all right that was, that was, that was very embarrassing, but it's hundred percent internal. No, <laughs> nobody actually cares. Nobody you know? cares. They'll, they'll yeah. skip it. They'll go by. But those first weeks you're just like, oh, here's another, here's another post. I hope it, you know, clicks in and, you know, three or four likes. You're like, yeah, it's another one. And then like two, three weeks in, you post it and somebody's like, Hey, I saw your post today. I would love to talk about X, talk about Y. And you're like, damn, Clark was right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love so you that. like, yeah, yeah you, you fight, you fight through that of just like, nobody's watching this. Nobody's reading this. And all of a sudden it's that first person who's like, Hey, I saw your post today. I, I thought I should reach out. That was, that really hit me or like, you know, that I'm super relatable situation right now. And I think that's a lot in with what you and Ross both said about, you know, just write these posts that can relate to your target audience. You know, it's not about getting likes. It's not about getting, uh, you know, comments on there. It's about finding your end target audience, which is in our case, people hiring accountants and accountants and make sure your message are directed toward, you know, right at them. And like I said earlier, they're not on LinkedIn often, but when they happen to be cruising through there and I tell a story about busy season and it's a nightmare, they're having that nightmare right now. And they're like, oh, there's a different way out of this let me reach out to Nick. You know, and those are, that's the point is just staying top of mind, having these posts that go out there and, you know, they're not always liked, they're not always, you know, yeah. well received, but you know, they're, they're there. So when the time comes for you to be able to do it, you look like a, a subject matter expert in the accounting recruiting field. You look like, you know, what they need at that time. And I think that that's, you know, the harder part to process at the beginning, because I didn't have anything for people to look back on. There wasn't posting before it was, all right, we have to start doing this. We have to make it part of our brand. We have to continue it. You know, you can't miss weeks. You can't miss months to keep doing it. So when the time comes when, you know, Susie Q is ready to get out of public accounting, we have that post that she happens to read right when she gets on LinkedIn. And now, boom, she's talking to us about a conversation instead of our competition. And I think that's what can begin to differentiate you from, from other recruiters. 
that, that could be a quarter million dollar difference right there, right? With mm-hmm. some accounts and what you're looking at. And, yeah. and when you guys are five months in and, <clears throat> you know, I think combined maybe a, what, 10 years of experience in recruiting, yeah. not that you weren't great recruiters or great at sales, but like if you're competing with the, the, the tens of thousands of agencies and hundreds of thousands of recruiters out there, but you look at the context. That's I'm I'm the same way, right? I yeah. you know I te- you know been in the industry under ten years total when yeah. I started this. It's just like how do I leverage that? How do I shoot past people that have more reps than I do? You know, I have a decent amount. It's content, it's marketing, right? Who's willing to do the things that other people aren't willing to do? Um, and mm-hmm. figure out content. Figure out how to write engaging content. You no, know, just marketing in general is a game changer. <clears throat> then you start to get good at the marketing as an agency. I mean, I know you guys inbox, your connection rates, your like was nuts for your industry mm-hmm. for accounts. And I know you guys are constantly having those conversations. And you and I were talking before before we hit record of just like how many scenarios you've gone through in the last year that now you feel so much more prepared for like new stuff coming up and like, you're just that much quicker. And that's what great marketing allows, especially if you're up and coming, you get those reps quicker. You get to all those tough lessons that you have to go through as a recruiter or as an owner, you go through them quicker with good marketing. And when you're dealing with a runway and trying to stay afloat and paying the bills and how much more expensive stuff is nowadays, like, you almost can't afford not to have great marketing and assisting you in all yeah. this. You can kind of get through all the kind of muck that it is in building a firm. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. And yeah, like you know, to that point, just continuing to to do it, having that marketing, it's free marketing. If you're the one making the post for you, send them out there. And now I'm, you know, walking the dog and I see something that sparks a headline and I get excited. I'm like, Oh, that's, that's going to be a good hook for a, uh, for a, a post later this week. And I think that is kind of changed. You know, when I started, it was 10, 20, 30 minutes to write a post. Now it's, you know, eight minutes, five minutes, you know, you, you can write something, you know, I have testimonials of, of people we've worked with that makes it easier to write. Cause I could literally just post what they said about us. It's not, you know, us trying to figure out, Oh, let's talk about a scenario. It's like a situation. Like we have a lot more candidates, a lot more clients that we've worked with that we can tell their story. We can tell their successes hell we can tell their failures like those those make great posts that's yeah. stuff that people want to hear it's it's real it's you know what what's actually happening and i think speaking about those and having that you know makes you feel more approachable and that's at the end of the day for both sides what, what we want to be is an approachable company and you get definitely are and it comes across in the content and and you were able to flip that i think with the content the candidates you have like <laughs> you were like, oh, do I do automation on this MPC? I was like, you can. But I was like, why don't you just go after like your target accounts? You got 20 names. Like, why don't you just target people individually? <clears throat> and I know that seemed to kind of be working out for you because there's sometimes in accounting, it can be pretty custom on what they need. Mm-hmm. MPC is something I get asked about all the time. But yeah, like talk to me about kind of your experience kind of figuring that out and navigating that. Yeah, so I mean, the MPC approach is huge. I mean, we, I think, and I'm lucky that I have old colleagues I've worked with, you know, referrals from them. We get really strong people that have gone through us. And when we're able to show that profile to a company that's looking for that specific one, uh, specifically, you know, if they have you know, financial reporting, if they're an SEC reporting company, they need somebody who's coming from one of the big four accounting firms. They have that experience. If I can go to them and say, hey, this person has worked in the financial services industry, they've audited there, they have their CPA, they're like, where can I sign? Like, this is this is the perfect candidate. This is exactly what we need. I've curated my messaging to say, hey, you know, this, you want this candidate because X, Y, and Z, we have this candidate. What, well, you know, let's start a conversation. It's not just, hey, can we help you find people? And, you know, I've, I've identified a job opening. I've identified a key decision maker. I'm presenting them with a solution. You know, that's what clients want. They don't want you to say you can do a thousand different things that you can't. They want you to do that one thing that you can and be able to present it in the right light. So. I think that's really helped us. It, it was huge, right? I think that's where I started teaching people. Your best NPCs are going to come from <clears throat> current clients or prospects or people you have agreements with, maybe you haven't made a placement where you know, like, hey, what's the skill set that you're always kind of looking for, right? Kind of asking it with those questions. <clears throat> and then you can go to your cold market, similar title, similar type of company, and assume they're probably looking for the same thing over mm-hmm. and over. And that's how we came up with like a much more targeted NPC approach from like digital and from LinkedIn, right? Because I, I did this stuff on cold calls and, and walking into places locally in LA when I was doing skill trade placements, but it's a little bit different on LinkedIn, right? Standing away from the noise. And 
it was just effective. And I remember you telling me like, yeah, it was MPC and it was this it was targeted. We got an agreement. I'm like, great. <laughs> like, you know, it, it, it works. We don't have to overthink it. It's just always thinking strategically and being intentional of like, make it make sense for them. Right. Mm-hmm. And there's some trial and error around, around that. And some people reply and some people don't. Some people say I'm all good or someone's like, well, we need them to have all five of these things. Like, ah, oh, they only have four or five, but like maybe we can hop on the phone and chat about it or, um, or why do they need the fifth thing or, you know, yada, yada. So, I think that was cool. Is like you guys just tried everything and just kept trying to figure out how to layer stuff on. Now I got automation, I got content, I'm qualifying better roles. Like, how do I do MPC better? Next thing you knew, you're like, you're able to do all these things. Like at once, I was like within two to three months. Like, what, how did that feel going like three months later? You're like, okay, I'm I'm doing the things. Yeah, I mean, it was thousands of pounds of relief off my shoulders because it's like I, these are the things I wanted to do. These are the processes I wanted to have. But then all of a sudden it was coming together. This is, this is happening the way you see it. Cause like I said, on day one, you have that end goal, you know, Nick find candidate, Nick find job order. We put it together, but now it felt that simple. You know, I was doing those tools, putting those things in place where I was able to find the candidates, you know, qualify these recs, figure out if they're going to be a good fit, make the pitch to our clients. And then, you know, can not necessarily convince, but, you know, tell these candidates if this is a great opportunity, we'd love you to, interview here it ends up being a match and then boom you know new client happy candidate we have them for the future and one of my favorite things we learned is you know we put three different people to interview there let's spend those other two people who didn't get the job and now we're using those at npcs and we can tell a success story of hey we've just placed somebody in a similar role you know we would love you to see some of the other people who are currently in the market and i think that that speaks to the validity of your company it shows the success patterns and you're able to continue to leverage relationships you made because you still want to help those candidates find their end goal. And I think that that, you know, provides an opportunity where it doesn't just stop when you get that, that first fill, you're able to kind of compound successes on top of each other by using strategies you've helped implement into, you know, Hey, this, this candidate story is not over yet. We're just starting. Let's, you know, continue to put it through the process. And I think that that's been huge for us. That's a great way to put it. You know, candidate story is not over yet is a brilliant way to put it. And <clears throat> I appreciate you kind of just sharing the, the breakdown. It's super informative. And, you know, some people that listen, it's like, okay, I know to use Tripify, the profile, the content, and, you know, maybe I can pick up the courses or whatever. What was the benefit of like working one-on-one with, with me, I guess, with a coach and kind of versus just kind of trying things just on here <clears throat> or just using a course, right? Like what benefit did that have for you? Yeah. I mean, Number one, there's just the accountability. I mean, we're yeah. going in each week and you have to have that that want, you, you know, that drive each week when you go in. If you're dreading going into that 2.30 meeting, it's that the program's not for you. You're not going <laughs> to get anything out of it. It's not going to be helpful. I'll save you the money now. It's not worth it. Yeah, if you please don't join. It, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Yeah. I don't think Clark can watch you in there. Um, yeah, if you don't, I mean, if you don't want to see change in, in what you're doing, there's, there's no point in doing the program. But if you have... You know, that each, you know, I think it was two or three times a week, honestly, that we were going in, we were excited about the meetings. You know, I had content I put together that I was waiting to get feedback. There was different sales strategies where I was excited to see how do I do a 360 call? What is a 360 call? You know, yeah. having having all these different lessons that, you know, you, you know, we'd go over a hundred things that would, that would, in each meeting, if I took away one thing, that that's all I would do for the next week is just hammer that and just like, all right, I want to practice this more. I want to practice this more. And so once you've kind of reached that point where all this repetition and all this practice has come in, it's like, all right, now I've, I understand the 360 calls. I, I'm good at them. All right, what are we learning next? Like, let's, you know, it's that, that drive to kind of want to keep learning more techniques and strategies that, again, we don't have access to if we don't join and have these conversations. And even the, the other people in the program, I love those joint calls because there's so many good stories, both successes and failures in there that, you get to hear from and, and learn from those. And I think those honestly do more for us as well. Having, uh, you know, hearing about their successes, what they did. And I think Keely does a really good job of driving into the the small wins. It's like, yeah. all right, so what does that mean? What does well, that we mean? We did that How earlier that today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. And I think that those, I mean, that's helpful because even if you don't realize you're hearing about successes, they're telling you how they did it 
And then you're going to be like, oh, okay, I didn't try to do that before. So yeah. I think there's a lot to be to be you know gained out of those conversations too. I, I love it. I mean, learn and apply, <clears throat> learn and apply. I mean, that's all you guys were doing, and, and it's paid off. I know you guys keep growing and keep growing in terms of not just like revenue and placements, but just everything that you're learning about the business where it's sustainable. Like I think you guys can see yourself doing this for a long time and have the plan in place. It's just been executing it. So I, I, you know, I appreciate you sharing the, the story and, and, and your experience, you know, getting into recruiting, building easy, working together. Um, it was an absolute joy. Any last things that you want to leave the people with? <sighs> No, I mean, if you guys are kind of stuck in a rut, I mean, this is this is an opportunity to really change your approach, change everything about it. Um, you know, that first step of the humility of saying, I need help. And then from there, you know, having that that drive and desire to go after it, I, I think makes all the difference in the world. And just the tools and outreach strategies that we've learned over the past year has made, you know, tenfold difference on what we were doing before and, you know, our success path now where we see ourselves going forward on. We're, we're excited about what the future holds. Yeah. That you should be, man. I'm, I'm excited for you, and I always have been and, and always rooting for you guys. And I know you're <clears> going to accomplish some some pretty great things in, in this industry and do things the right way. So, um, dude, Nick, appreciate you having on, my friend. And uh, awesome. this is it's good. Been a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Connect with Nick. We'll have the socials and the website on, on the episode page. So connect with Dick and Brian. They're awesome dudes and just get people to know in the recruiting industry and up and coming. So uh, that's it. Well, uh, until next time, we'll see you guys. Sounds good. We'll see you, Clark.